I'm Bernie Frischer, director of the Institute for Advanced Technology and the Humanities at the University of Virginia, and also director of the Rome Reborn Project. I'm often asked when the Rome Reborn Project started, and the long answer is that it started in the Renaissance in the mid-15th century when some papal secretaries had the idea of reconstructing the ruins of ancient Rome using words. My personal involvement started, of course, much later in the 1970s when I was a fellow at the American Academy in Rome and I saw the great physical model of ancient Rome in the Museum of Roman Civilization. And I wondered if there was some way of using technology to get this wonderful monument outside of this one fairly obscure museum into the hands of students, scholars, and the general public around the world. By the 1990s, uh, virtual reality technology had come along, and I found some wonderful philanthropists and foundations in the Los Angeles area who caught this vision and helped me to start making the model. At the same time, I met Dean Abernathy, who at that time was an MA student at UCLA, and he was using the perfect virtual reality technology uh, for this kind of project. I'm Dean Abernathy. I'm the Associate Director of the Institute for Advanced Technology and the Humanities, and also the Associate Director of the Rome Reborn Project. I met Bernie while I was uh, in graduate studies at the University of California, Los Angeles. We were working on a uh, project that uh, was visualizing uh, ancient Rome using some technology that we'd begun to develop uh, to study urban environments. We had common interests uh, looking at historic questions, and I think uh, you know immediately the project was, was uh, developed. The goal of the Rome Reborn Project is to use digital technology to illustrate the entire urban development of the ancient city of Rome from the first human settlement which we think occurred in about 1000 BC, the late Bronze Age, down to the depopulation of the city at the beginning of the Middle Ages in about the year 550 AD. Students were pivotal in, in creating these models. Really this took off in a school of architecture at UCLA and has also found a home at the, the University of Virginia as well. And uh, architectural students who use these uh, kinds of digital tools to you know, create things for the future actually you know, are very good at understanding space and at using these kinds of tools and materials to create these kinds of uh, buildings and models. In Rome Reborn, scholars play a critical role. I always like to say if you want to invoke a print metaphor that the scholars of the Rome Reborn team are the authors, and uh, we who offer support are like the typesetters, if you will. The scholars are, are recruited because they are the experts on any one or more of the 300 or so buildings and monuments around ancient Rome that still survive today, about which we have a lot of evidence. The scholars drive the project. They provide the modeling data. They review the work in progress. And finally, at the end, this is very important, they sign actually a form authorizing the inclusion of the model in the overall representation of the city. So the scholars play a critical role. And I think that this is what differentiates the Rome Reborn project from projects of historic urban modeling that had come before, and certainly from the many commercial models that are out there of ancient Rome. If you look on the box, you won't find the name of a scholar who takes responsibility as an author. In Rome Reborn, our scholars are the authors. But I don't want to downplay the role of the modelers, because these are often advanced students who are students of architecture or archaeology. And through the modeling uh, project, they come to know as much about the site as the scholars, and they often uh, can make corrections or, or make suggestions that the scholars accept. So uh, this becomes a truly collaborative process, driven by the scholars, but the students are, are full partners uh, in typically in the making of an individual component of the overall city model. The model is used a couple ways in education. One is obviously when the students are building the model, they're learning a tremendous amount about the building. They're actually you know, really beginning to put together drawings that were done by archaeologists and synthesizing these into a three-dimensional building. That's a really a form of testing the information. And um, you know, for a student to be able to do this and in a sense turn the tables on their instructor, it's a great opportunity for them to actually really take charge of their education and do something really interesting with it. Many of them actually have really helped the archaeologists to understand the implications of their drawings even in other research. So many changes and, and refinements at least have come through students really examining this kind of work and doing this, uh, doing these activities. The other way it can be used in education is really is, uh, to really transform the way these kinds of materials are, are viewed in a classroom. 
you know, uh, for architectural historians and, uh, you know, architects who study architectural history, when you begin to look at this stuff, you're looking at drawings and plans and things like that. And, you know, as an architect, I know it, you know, it takes many years to really understand the implications of a drawing. It's an abstraction. Uh, but these spaces allow people to really understand the buildings, to enter into them, to, uh, you know, experience the light, the space, and sometimes the sound. Having practiced with this on Rome for 10 years or, or more now, um, the opportunity has come up to actually use this um, technology in, uh, other, at other locations and other excavations and archaeological sites. Uh, one place that I'm really excited about working on is the Sacred Valley in Peru. It's known mostly because it's the, at the end of it is Machu Picchu, one of the seven modern wonders of the world. But what's really fantastic about this is that you can actually integrate a Machu Picchu into the whole environment, to the ecology of the valley, into the topography, and uh, show the relationship of it to other Incan sites in the area. Well, we're often asked, well, where do you go after Rome Reborn 1.0, 1.1, 2.0? We've finished Rome in the year 320 AD. If you think about it, the sweep of Roman urban history we're trying to cover consists of 1,500 years. So there are 1,499 more years to cover. So there's still a lot of work to do with Rome. There's also, though, a lot of work to do elsewhere in the world. There are several hundred scholars now who are actively involved in making these kinds of urban models and models of individual monuments down to even vases using 3D technology. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing. But there are still a lot of uh, areas of the world that have not been modeled. Uh, I dare say most of the world has not yet been modeled, most of the significant sites. For example, there's Giza and the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, which has excavated Giza and has the largest collection of information and of material about Giza approached us to work with them on making a 3D model of the site. And finally, how are we going to gather all of these models and preserve them and transmit them and make them available to the general public and students and scholars around the world? And our institute has started a project called SAVE, which stands for Serving and Archiving Virtual Environments. SAVE will be the world's first online peer-reviewed journal where scholars can publish these 3D models related metadata, archaeological documentation, and monographs that explain the significance of the sites, their history, and the history of the modeling project itself. And we hope to be the leaders in that as we have been in the 3D modeling of cities. I'd like to end this video by thanking everybody who caught the vision in the mid-1990s and found it inspirational and lent their support to make this day possible when we finished the biggest urban model ever made, uh, Rome in the year 320 AD.